Joining us now on CounterPoints is The Lever News' David Sirota. David, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And so we wanted to have you on to talk about some of the latest reporting uh, from Lever, particularly this piece that we can put up here now, uh, the lawsuit that could freeze speech against billionaires by Jordan Yule of Lever News. And so this is, this is about a kind of a defamation case that has been filed against uh, a Beto O'Rourke uh, that could have dramatic implications uh, for uh, the role of money in politics going forward. Can you talk a little bit about this, uh, this lawsuit? Sure. Uh, during the course of Beto O'Rourke's gubernatorial campaign, uh, he criticized uh, Republican Governor Greg Abbott for accepting a $1 million donation uh, from a, a major oil and gas company uh, CEO, a pipeline company CEO, uh, after weeks after the legislature and Abbott signed a bill uh, to that included a, basically a loophole uh, in weatherization mandates for fossil fuel infrastructure. This was after the storm that shut down the Texas power grid. So a bill comes through the legislature uh, it includes language to exempt uh, various parts of the natural gas infrastructure from its mandates, which would require them, those companies, to make more investments in weatherization. And soon after that happened, the CEO of the company made a $1 million donation to, uh, to Governor Abbott. Beto O'Rourke criticized that, uh, insinuating that it was corrupt, that it was uh, essentially a quid pro quo, it was a reward uh, for the legislation moving uh, that moved through the, the Texas legislature. Uh, and now Bet the CEO is suing Beto O'Rourke, saying this is uh, defamatory, saying uh, that criticizing and insinuating that the donation is corrupt uh, is uh, essentially libelous. Uh, and what's important here to understand is that this case uh, revolves in part around uh, whether the legal system sees the CEO of this company, Energy Transfer, uh, and the CEO's name is Kelsey Warren, whether the legal system sees people like him as public or private citizens. Uh, basically, a private citizen, uh, it's, it's easier for that person to prove libel uh, a public citizen, the threshold is much, much lower. The idea being that if you're in the public arena, uh, the back and forth uh, over your political activity uh, it has much more uh, flexibility. Uh, there's much more uh, allowed for a much more wide ranging debate. This is a huge free speech case because ultimately, if the courts rule for the plaintiff and say that cr effectively criticizing money in politics as uh, corrupt, money goes in, uh, legislation comes out, out, uh, you could face a political candidates across the country could face financial ruin and financial punishment for saying that in the court in the context of an election. Yeah, I was just going to ask David, what's on the line here if we extend this to potential hypotheticals and other campaigns in the future, depending on how this case is ruled, what might that look like going forward? This example, we have a, a gas executive, um, but what would that look like in another case or how might that come up in campaigns uh, if the decision goes in a bad direction? Sure. Look, I mean, I think, you know, you look across the country and there's uh, big debates about uh, where pipelines can be built, uh, whether uh, uh, fracking and drilling happen. Uh, lots of money goes into the political system from the fossil fuel industry. Uh, and what this could do is say to political candidates campaigning in the context of that, that if you criticize uh, big donors from the fossil fuel industry or really any industry, uh, and you suggest that the money that's going into the political system is buying something, is going into that system to influence anybody, that you could uh, face a situation where you are not only sued, look, anybody can sue anybody in America, but you're not only sued by the donor, but that the courts have created a precedent making it easier for the courts to side with the plaintiff and punish you as a candidate. So essentially, it's a message to candidates that talk about money in politics at your peril. And the term gaslighting is overused in our discourse, but I actually think it really does you know, apply here in, in this way, in that you're being asked to look at something and see it for what it obviously is, but then being told that you can't describe what it's so very obviously is. And so forget politicians. What about the, what about the public here? Hmm. And what about the press? I would think 
half of my reporting over my career uh, would, would constitute defamation if this actually goes through. Well, that's for and, other reasons. Yes, yeah, for other reasons. The other half would be defamation for different reasons. But yours, probably 100% of the reporting you've done uh, throughout your career is connecting the dots between money going in and legislation coming out. So what, is, what does this do to shows like this or journalism like the kind that you do over at The Lever? It's a great question. I mean, yes, uh, the media... Uh, writ large, no matter what side you're on, uh, should be concerned about this, about the pre the precedent that it could set. If we say, the, if, if the legal system says that the CEO, a billionaire CEO of one of the largest pipeline companies in the country, uh, making million dollar donations, if the legal system says that person for the purposes of the law is a private citizen, not a public figure, that creates a precedent uh, saying that you're right, not only political candidates, but news organizations, advocacy groups and the like, on all sides of any issue, uh, can face punishment uh, for connecting the dots. It, it really is a way to freeze free speech uh, against the powerful. And here's the thing, this case is in a court in Austin where most of the, if not all the, the justices are elected, they were Democrats, it's an elected court. But it moves to the Texas Supreme Court that is chock full of Republicans. So the case can be appealed by the plaintiff to a much more Republican-dominated Supreme Court, a Texas Supreme Court. And if it if it if you if you want, it can be appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. To me, this is the biggest free speech case, or at least one of the biggest free speech cases in the country, in the society right now. And there's been a lot of talk about free speech with Elon Musk, social media. This is a direct assault on free speech, on the ability. And I want to be clear. I know there are some conservatives say, oh, you know, I'm excited that Beto O'Rourke is, is, you know, potentially in legal trouble here. I, that's the wrong way, in my view, to look at this. This is not only about Beto O'Rourke. This is about the entire uh, uh, discourse that how are conservatives going to feel the next time they criticize a Democratic billionaire and a Democratic billionaire can use this uh, precedent, if it's set, to go after them? That it is a way to chill speech uh, uh, against or criticizing uh, billionaires, wealthy corporations that have unlimited legal resources to file these kinds of cases. I was just going to ask that as well next with this this question of as conservatives have tried to sort of squeeze all the juice out of the populist moment and populist rhetoric and and level you know all kinds of potentially defamatory accusations against you know Mark Zuckerberg if this case were to go in a certain direction um, it uh, absolutely would affect their ability to make those arguments have you seen any pickup from anyone on the right that's concerned about the implications of this case I, I haven't. And I think part of it, though, is that there's not a lot of awareness of this case. And I think maybe there's a presumption that, that the, the courts will throw it out. I don't presume that knowing that while it is in a Democratic-dominated uh, court right now, a lower court, it can move up to a Republican court. And, and, and the question with our courts now are, are, are they going to behave in a partisan way? I mean, on its face, look, let's be honest, on its face, the idea that the CEO of one of the largest pipeline companies in the, in the country who's made a million dollar donation into the political system, the idea that that person is just a private citizen is just preposterous and absurd. But this is a politically active company, a politically active billionaire. Uh, I, I, I think this is not in my view, I'm speculating here, that this is not just about, as as the plaintiff said, it's a, you know, he experienced mental anguish when O'Rourke was criticizing him. And uh, uh, I think it's less about, you know, his individual feelings and more about an effort to try to set a precedent about what can be said and what can't be said uh, about uh, the rich and powerful. He can afford the therapy. <laughs> right, yes, and, and they also they, they bring up mean tweets in reply. Like it's, uh, when yeah. you look, uh, the, uh, you, the lever quotes uh, the attorney, his attorney saying, "When you look at the comments that his followers put in on his tweets, they believe O'Rourke. They believe that Mr. Warren is a criminal that is engaged in profit over lives of Texans." So, literally citing, you know, mean mentions, replies, saying that this has done kind of you know created mental anguish. Yeah, and it. it it's no fun to get ratioed, right? I'm sure. <laughs> right. But, but oh, like, okay. yeah. you're sure. <laughs> I mean, I kind of enjoy it sometimes. Actually, right. like sh fine. shutting down free speech yes. because you don't like getting ratioed you, is insane. Yeah, insane. completely insane. And also, for any conservatives who are happy that O'Rourke might uh, be out a million dollars, really bad news for them. 
guy is super rich. Like <laughs> right. he, he, he married into a very wealthy family. Right. Uh, right. So nobody that, likes that, to lose. And again, no, I, yeah. that's why I go back to it. That's why yeah. I think this is not necessarily only about this case. I think it's about yeah. trying to create a larger legal precedent. Yeah, and billionaires fund these attacks on other billionaires. So I'm curious to see how the sort of discourse around around this. Uh, sometimes they fund these yeah. attacks. On other billionaires. Last question: Did you, did your reporting turn up any indication that this is one of those politically strategic lawsuits that's funded by uh, kind of a, an, or, an organization that is trying mm. to create legal cr crimps on on political speech for the benefit of billionaires, or is this just a mentally anguished billionaire who just wants to lash out at Beto O'Rourke? Well, I'll say this. We, I, we haven't discovered that yet, but there are definitely motives that this particular billionaire has uh, that we're going to be reporting in a couple of other stories. Uh, in, in other words, in, in engagements and entanglements uh, that he's been in before. Uh, so it's not just he randomly kind of popped up and did this. So stay tuned for our reporting on that. Mm. Which, which will, I'm sure, wind you uh, in court next, right after uh, <laughs> Beto O'Rourke. David, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Great reporting. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. Ryan Grimm and the Mentally Anguished Billionaires is a band that I would see at Bonnaroo. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, we'll keep uh, bringing David back to talk about these future lever stories, and to, we'll continue to follow the storyline uh, with the Beto O'Rourke case uh, in the weeks ahead. Yeah, and be nice to the billionaire, everybody. Get, be nice. don't, don't get us dragged into court. <laughs> hey, guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.